Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Scorpio. If Scorpio is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. Okay, knock, knock, knock. Let's look and see what we have here in these beautiful tea leaves. And I hope you all are doing well. Um, if you're watching this and you enjoy it, please think about liking the video. It helps me get into the algorithm and reach more people. All right. <laughs> Before I twirl this around and look too much further at all of the formations, I want to look at this one because this one is wild, okay? Uh, it looks like some kind of chicken. You can see the feet, the beautiful plump body, and this uh, the tail feather here. And then we have the head and this kind of... It almost looks like it has horns. It has maybe like snakes growing out of its head. Um, I really think that this is uh, a beautiful amalgamation of um, of the the different attributes and properties of uh, pot, you know, humanoid, animal, bird, uh, reptile, and so let's look at what all this means. Uh, so the, I would say that this is more like a hen, okay, than a rooster. Um, this is the, this is the bringer of the egg, the sacred egg, right? The sacred ovum. The, this is a portal, um, the, the a mother goddess, right? Uh, in a lot of ways, the true rulers of the roost, right? Uh, we think of the rooster as the one that kind of, um, you know, keeps everything together, keeps his little, his little, uh, women in line there. But come on, let's be honest. <laughs> it's really these ladies that, um, you know, run things. And, uh, so, we have just this beautiful, beautiful, divine feminine, really fully embodied here, a life bringer, a bringer of the sacred, a promise of tomorrow, uh, the beginning, the beginning, the beginning, right? Um, but also just so fully realized, so much self, right? Um, completely, um, and wholly holistic and, um, refined and, uh, in these processes of healing and knowing self and, um, really, really engaging that sacred consciousness, that, um, cosmic consciousness, really, Okay, and then up here we have, you know, the head that is almost a crown of snakes. This is not somebody to be messed with. It is also reaching up into this uh, metaphysical, spiritual zone. So it, I also think that this is very uh, indicative of uh, supreme psychic powers, intuitive, um, really just... Um, I mean, just, I am blown away by this sign because this formation, the symbolism, because it really is just somebody who is mind, body, soul, uh, awakened, really, really able to, um, discern the knowledge, the, the information, the data that is around them. It is transmuted to wisdom with ease right? Because this work has been going on for so long. And um, we really do just have this 
Um, I mean, it just, I think of kind of, kind of this serene face, um, but eyes that are just ablaze, right? That just are looking out a million miles into the abyss, but so fully charged and um, capable and always, always in a state of that creative force, that sexual force, that uh, serpentine force, okay? But grounded, right? Very much grounded and very much doing the work to create in the materials, in the material realms as well. Okay. So those lower, um, physical spheres. So really, I think that, um, <laughs> maybe that's just the end of the reading here. Um, I really think that this, this to me indicates that you have done some serious, serious interior spiritual, um, you know, alchemic self alchemy, uh, whatever, whatever system you have been partaking in or systems. Uh, I, I really am blown away by the power that I feel here, the energy that I feel here. And I'm, but I'm not surprised either because while we're, we're talking about a Scorpio, and you all are just, you know, powerful beings and you let that be known. <laughs> but we're also looking at, um, this is the strength card, strength slash lust card. It is called the lust card within, um, the Thoth deck. Okay. But this is also the, um, in other decks, you, it would be the strength card. Okay. And this is usually, um, a woman who is standing next to a lion with its mouth open. She's pulling, prying it, prying it open, right? Um, holding it open. In this card, we have, uh, this beautiful harlot of uh, the harlot of Babylon, or, um, she goes by other names that I won't say here, but, um, this beautiful, beautiful, uh, feminine consciousness that is riding the beast is fully, fully, um, activated, is self-realized as we talked about in this other beautiful, um, symbol, uh, just really that, um, You know, I, I would say that this is, this is usually aligned more with the idea of a left-handed goddess archetype or, uh, kind of a more, um, morally ambiguous, um, maybe a more primordial or arcane goddess, uh, kind of makeup, more fertility centric. There's not a lot of that, like... You know, we think of Mother Mary, maybe the Taras, um, these, uh, you know, S Sophia, these kinds of uh, pure, almost virginal mother, <laughs> mother consciousness, but virginal um, uh, goddesses, right? Um, and, but this is kind of more of like that real earthy, fiery, um, you know, goes into those dark shadowy places, um, that can bask very near the sun, um, you know, just is pulsating with life, with life and wisdom and, you know, all these things. Speaks to the animals, is of the animals, um, very animalistic, Okay, uh, just very knowledgeable in all directions. N there's no narrow field for this goddess or this feminine energy. And so I feel this is, um, you know, very much kind of a place that you are in. And, you know, um, I think that it really goes without saying that you do not have to be um, a feminine 
being a person that identifies as a feminine being or a woman or any of these kinds of things um as you know we all span the spectrum and um especially spiritually and these are applicable qualities to all beings right it just depends on where you where you have focused your work um you know in your cycles what work have you done previously and um you know what things are really activated in this alignment in this configuration okay so we're off to a good start <laughs> a powerful start i really um i i feel a great sense of just energy gathered just like on the cusp of kind of you know um like spilling over or like a like a big um kind of like a climax of power right of energy and um I see even in this in this bowl it seems like everything's kind of drifting this way we kind of see it looks like a a person or maybe even like a like a mermaid or in the hair is kind of flowing this way and then we kind of see another person that's being swept this way and so I think these channels are just furious right now um the current is is so strong and I believe that uh just based on some of these positionings up here I want to look at this really quick some of these positionings and including this I I really think that your um you've had a lot of messaging from maybe like your ancestors, your elders. Um these could be intelligences that kind of work in line with like like your daemon. Um these are kind of beings that are looking out for you and I, but I get the feeling that this is part of um your physical bloodline your ancestral bloodline and I think that you've been getting messaging from them and that's probably been coming through like visions dreams synchronicities um you know signs symbols omens these kinds of things um and you've been listening and I think that I think that it's really caused this kind of quick stream to appear in your life to really gain some um, forward motion. I think at the same time, and as we're looking at the at this stuff, it kind of looks, you know, it looks like almost being blown away with the wind. And and even as I as I look at this first formation we were looking at, it even also if you kind of turn it this way, it looks like a person in a dress with their arms up and they're kind of like sprinkling around the wind and you know twirling up the air, um, the air element in this situation in this um, position in your. Uh, reality right now and so I think that there's just kind of this like movement of clearing out a lot of old stuff I think not even having to take too much time to go and like excavate each little thing and kind of find the root um, and work it out which a lot of times that's what we have to do, especially with like trauma, right? Or fundamental beliefs and coping mechanisms that we arrive with or that are bestowed upon us uh, in an early age or um, that are cultivated through situations and environment, right? Um, but then sometimes we get to these points in our lives where it's like we can just rip the whole tree out of the ground, um, roots and all, 
because the wind is blowing so, so furiously, right? And so I feel like these ancestors who are just, and I picture, um, you know, a, just a long line of them twirling their fingers and the wind is flying and these old things are just gone. They're just gone in the wind. Like when you see a tornado and there's like a barn flying away and, and a cow and, you know, um, these old hurts, these old pains, these old um, beliefs and, you know, things that have been conditioned that just do not serve you. They're just kind of going away. And it's allowing you a lot of room, I mean, a wide open amount of room to not only go deeper into yourself, but really, really just fall so deeply in love with your uh, authentic and um, true nature, right? You are having all of these layers of things that usually would take years and years of work are kind of just going away, disintegrating, flying away in the wind. And you are able to really get a good look at yourself. And I applaud you because I feel that you are really receiving yourself with just ra like radical love, acceptance, radical acceptance, radical love. And, um, you know, I think in life, it's easy for us to give this kind of energy to other people, especially like a child or a young person, right? We just, we look at somebody who, um, that hasn't, has not, uh, begun to understand themselves. They might be picking at, you know, um, feeling ashamed or embarrassed of the things that make them happy, their, um, you know, preferences of things that they enjoy, the music they, I mean, I'm looking, I'm thinking of examples, the music they like, the way they dress, you know, their silly little things they like to spend their time doing. Maybe it's not popular stuff. Maybe it's not stuff their family likes, whatever, whatever it is. And they feel a lot of shame and guilt and um, just a sense of not feeling good enough, right? But then, you know, you somebody with an open and loving heart, you look at somebody that is going through that kind of situation and you just want to hold them up and tell them none of that stuff matters like you whatever you want to be that's okay and that's acceptable and anyways these things are not who you are so they especially are fine it's it should it shouldn't matter what you like you know enjoy what you enjoy right and um, I think some people spend their whole lives trying to be something other than what they are, okay? Um, and it's so easy to see that in somebody else and just tell, want to tell them it's okay and accept them. And, you know, um, it, but when it is you who is going through that um, and cannot figure out for the life of you to just, you know, be, um, you know, be in a love affair with your own being, <laughs> you know, it sounds easy. It's not right. It's maybe the hardest thing there is to do in life, period. But I believe that you really are on that path. Something has happened that, um, you've been given kind of just the ultimate gift and that is to really begin to know yourself and to accept yourself, to love the life that you have, to love your own fate, to be accepting of your fate. Even the stuff that looks really hard, looks really difficult. 
seems like nobody would ever be able to accept. Um, but you are accepting it. You are accepting those parts of yourself, those difficult, difficult aspects of yourself. And um, I think that that is such a rare freedom. And um, as you go through this process, I mean, my goodness, you are really able, I imagine, to do just about anything. I mean, I can't think of what couldn't you do, really, if you apply yourself. Um, and most importantly, I think that you are able to prioritize the things that really mean something to you. Okay, a lot of that illusionary stuff falls away. And so you live maybe a smaller life, but, but that's, that's okay, right? You're not living for anybody else. Um, a more manageable life. Your expectations are lowered and more reasonable, right? They can be met. And therefore you can enjoy, you can enjoy what is happening versus lamenting the past, lamenting the now, lamenting what might be or what might not ever come to pass, right? And so I think that, it, you know, in a lot of ways, this is almost like you're coming into, you know, a very, uh, a very Taoist kind of alignment. And, um, I think, you know, for a lot of us, we spend so much time chasing these ideas. It's like pounding your head against a concrete wall because they're simple. They're simple. They're simple concepts, simple, um, techniques, almost non-techniques, right? To get to this, this kind of living, but for how whatever has happened or how however um life has kind of looked out for you you've really gotten there recently and i for one would like to know how you're doing how are you doing it um because it's you know this is something i struggle with almost you know eternally it feels like and and so if you if you can shed any light please put it in the put it in the comments and now i'm just looking at this a little bit more here and i see a person carrying a child so i feel that uh I feel that you, I mean, I really think that, I'm trying to see. I wonder if you, I feel like this is like going to be happening in the future. I, maybe a mentorship situation or um, taking on raising somebody in your family um somebody i don't know that it's your own child biologically um but maybe a stepchild uh and but i really do think that um the freedom that you are finding in your spirit in your heart in your mind uh is really really going to be so beneficial to this person um, and now I, I see that there is a 10, uh, and that seems important to this situation with the child. Um, uh, maybe they are 10 years old. Maybe the, you know, maybe this is something that will happen in 10 months and 10 years, 10 weeks. I don't know. Um, but something with, with that. And that seems important because that is a really, that's a prominent um, formation right there. Okay. Uh, I also see. I 
I also see this kind of, it almost seems like a situation. This reminds me of something like Godzilla, some kind of destructive force. I feel like this is almost like, uh, like a love interest, an ex maybe. Um, and this is causing some kind of, I mean, some, they really, they're really upset. <laughs> And I see some kind of, um, I think that they are going to be kind of just trying to throw a wrench in the things that you have going on. Um, I don't think it's going to be a big concern to you because I think you're really, really just on this whole other tip right now. Like the wave is completely different. But I also see that you have this angel up here watching over the situation happening. And I think you're very protected. Um, and I, I almost wonder if you are going into a relationship soon or if you have started one with somebody who has a child and you're going to be like co helping co-parent with that child, like as a step parent or something. And maybe an ex is not liking that. Maybe you have children with this other person or maybe you didn't have children and that's kind of a sore, like a sore spot. Um, either way, I think that you're being watched over. It'll be fine. Um, and I just see this kind of like sad energy with this person with their head kind of lowered. And that's why I think that maybe this is almost like a situation where you couldn't have kids or um, they're like just really upset that you did not, you couldn't be, you could not stay a family unit to have, to have your children together. Um, but I think it's for the best because this person seems volatile Okay, I see them in an upright position, but I also see them in this like almost more animal position, like a like a lizard on all four legs or whatever. So I really think that um, they really just are kind of like, I will destroy your life type of person. Like if you're like if they see that you're being happy, especially like if they're looking at your social medias and stuff, they just are like ready to go for it. And, um, and so I think just, you know, protecting yourself and especially not engaging in that energy, but you have that angel watching over you. And I think that you're going to be okay. Um, just don't get involved with all of that, okay? <laughs> um, now, with all of this stuff going on, I also see this Saturn energy. And I keep looking at this because, um, if you know me, I'm a big fan of Saturn. But, um, so, I think that no matter what's going on, no, ha no matter how high the highs are, how well you are really kind of doing this self-work and a lot of these old things are going away, there's always kind of a, just an undertone of ever melancholy, okay? And um, I think that, you know, for some people that can be, it can be really, really difficult to go up and down, um, you know, from those, from that almost kind of manic states or clear states of clarity of understanding and then really falling into depressive states, melancholy. Um, but then for other people, I think that these kind of melancholic states can be grounding too. They um, keep you tied to that real ancient earth, that unrefined earth. And um, of course, probably 
Um, similar to the, you know, karmic work that we all do and have to do. Um, there's also the work of kind of, uh, refinement and, um, kind of driving the lead out of our, uh, the, you know, prima materia or the original material. And so we refine that through many processes and ordeals and this and this and this and, um, and that is kind of that self alchemy, right? The real fundamental beginning processes. And so, um, but I think, you know, sometimes it, this is not, it's not a negative thing to have those ties to that Saturn, Saturnian or Saturnine energy because it keeps you from, you know, that little, that little cord that's keeping you tied to the ground there's like a stake into the ground holding you from flying away you know floating into the uh the atmosphere and um you always have a way to get back down uh when you need to all right so i think that this is not a bad thing i think that um you know it especially if you uh, have faced some of that, um, you know, the dark night of the soul, have done some of that shadow work, have walked in that, that valley, um, that dark valley, uh, and, and come back with some, some insights about yourself, right? Some things that nobody can tell you, only you are going to know what you find there. Um, but instead of, instead of abandoning those parts of yourself, um, being accepting of them, working on them, trying to, um, you know, heal some of that stuff, but also integrating it. Uh, using things like sublimation to, and let me give you an example. I know these are probably a lot of words that are just like, okay, what are, what are you even talking about? Um, so finding out parts of yourself that are unsavory, that are, uh, most people wouldn't want to just admit. Um, or if they do, they use it as like a, a defense mechanism or like a part of their personality to really um, protect themselves from being hurt by others. So uh, violence, um, jealousy, being gossipy, petty. I mean, these are just some examples, but... Um, so what we do when we find that, okay, I have a proclivity towards losing my SH and sometimes getting a little bit violent, right? Um, we don't want to act like that. Of course not. We don't want to, um, subject others to that. Of course not. So what do we do with that energy? We don't deny it because... If you just push it under the rug or lock it in a closet or whatever, it's just going to grow and it's going to fester. And it's one day it's just going to unleash itself. And um, you might not be able to control it. And then this is when things happen that will change your life forever, right? Get you in trouble, hurt somebody, um, you know, something like that. So what we do is we... Uh, we, we do a process and this is one of many things you could do, but this is one that I, um, am partial to is the process of sublimation, which is taking these parts of ourselves and putting them to, uh, use in a way that has a positive impact in our own lives and the lives of our loved ones and our community. So you can make art, right? Maybe start a band. Maybe you're a really, really angry person, real violent person. So start like a metal band, right? Or, um, you know, make, make some weird, 
uh, manga about it or something, <laughs> you know? Um, I don't start a t-shirt company with like weird images that are, you know, a, like kind of violent forward or whatever it is, okay? But you put it to work in a way, maybe here's another kickboxing, okay? Maybe do like a martial art. Uh, that's, these kinds of things are wonderful because they move your body. You're, you know, um, learning, uh, the energy manipulation and how to channel the energy, but also you're engaging some of those, um, real primal feelings that we, listen, we all have some violence in us. Okay. So, and then again, this is just an example. So, we find things like this to manage and embrace the parts of ourselves. And there's so many of these things. And this is what I'm saying. When we're talking about the Saturnine energy, we go exploring for these so-called negative um, aspects of ourselves. And we, and we bring them into the light and we figure out what are we going to do with them so they don't rule us. So they don't get to tell us what to do. They don't just show up one day and devastate our lives because we've been ignoring it for so long. Okay. And um, so I think that, you know, it makes sense that all of this stuff would be going on in your life. And um, with this, uh, with the, the strength card, the lust card, the, um, you know, this, this power that you have going on, the stripping away of unnecessary things that's going on. Um, and so I think, you know, you're really in a highly magical and potent place right now. So I would say <coughs> not only are you, you know, doing all the stuff we're talking about, but, um, I think it's a good time for you to be uh, like we had just talked about being creative. Okay. Making some stuff, making some stuff out of what's going on with you, putting all of this beautiful energy into something. Also, we talked about you maybe being, um, you know, a kind of parental figure or a caregiver to someone coming up. And especially if it's somebody who is younger. So, um, you know, Teaching them by example, showing them how to do things while you're, you yourself are learning how to do them, but staying consistent. And, um, and I think one of the biggest things that the gifts that we can give to young people is just being curious and continuing to learn constantly. Um, I don't understand this idea that people get out of school and they get a job and whatever and you just stop learning. Like, we're all learning all the time. So, I think it's so important to show your passion um, for, for investigating the world and being curious and, and all of this um, working on yourself, you know, trying to make things better. Um, showing that through example to a child, okay? That's like supreme gift. Uh, let's see. I think everything looks super symmetrical coming up. We have a lot of love. Um, I think it's very balanced. Um, and I just, I get the image of kind of a tree full of fruit. So I think everything's going to be very fruitful. There's going to be some of that emotionality coming in. I think that has to do with this old person really trying to, um, you know, I think just come in and uh, bring up things that really are hurtful and maybe triggering for you to some degree. But I think that you're not going to fall into that. And, um, you know, you have that protection going on. So I think you should be good. And <laughs> like I'll try. All right. Okay, Scorpio. I thank you so much. I'm sorry my voice is just crazy right now because of the COVID. It is leaving my body. I'm feeling better. 
Um, I just am very congested and garbagey sounding, so I apologize. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, please like the video, and if you if you would like to, of course, um, it helps me get into the algorithm. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please think about doing that. It helps me, it will help me get to 5,000 subs and then I'm going to be doing two readings a day, okay? So that means every sign will get read at least once a week. And um, if you wanna leave a comment, let me know what's going on with you. Let me know, um, what was I? I asked you a question. You'll have to, you'll have to remind me even what that was. Um, <laughs> put it in the comments. Let me know what's going on. Um, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will talk again very soon.